that I have one more running sub two times ten bit sub So what I need to do today is kind of relate take that says how many molecules change 75 grams into moles. Okay. The molar mass of carbon tetrafluoride, by the way, is uh, 88.01. So if I divide those two, I get 0.85217, etc., etc., moles. Okay. So I know that 75 grams is equivalent to right, 0.85 moles, roughly. I know that if I had one mole of anything, it could be carbon atoms, could be carbon tetrafluoride molecules. If I had one mole of that stuff, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. I like using equivalent fractions, or as my dad used to call it, ratio and proportion. Because <laughs> that was the old uh, Equivalent fractions, right? But one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Do I have a mole in this particular case? No, I only have 0.85. So should I, in fact, have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules? No. I probably should have less, yes. How would I figure that out? Well, I'd multiply the two, right? 0.85 the equivalent number of molecules for 0.85 moles of a substance. Okay, if one mole is always 6.02, what's 0.85 moles comparatively speaking? Okay, well, how do you solve for that? Well, it's up to you. Like I said, I'm big on cross multiplying. One times x is x, and 6.02 times 10 to the 23 times 0.852, da, 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 right? By the way, that number is still in my calculator, 0 0.852, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Still in my calculator, so I'm just going to take that and times that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and I get 5.13 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Significant digits is still important for our final answer. I circled it, so it must be my final answer. Look, up here I got 75.0, that's 3. So I should have 3 in my answer. I do. 5.13 is 3 significant digits. Okay? So that's what we need to do for that one there. Is there any questions on that? Were you not sure about something there? Okay? Really what we're doing is we're just com simply comparing, right? One mole is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Well, I don't have a mole, I got 0.85. So what's 0.85 of 6.02 times 10 to the 23? What would that be equivalent to as far as molecules go? And it works out to be 5.13, okay? Uh, with these questions, if we go forwards, so if we kind of go this direction, we can always go backwards as well. So the next one I'm gonna get you to do is actually starting with molecules, and I want you to figure out the mass in grams. So we're going to work backwards, yes? So good old-fashioned some math here. We're going to skip this one for right now. We're going to go to the next page here. It says calculate the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 24 water molecules. Okay. Once again, okay, if I want to calculate the mass, look, you can, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can say, hey, what am I given? Right? Well, I'm given molecules. Right, that's fine. What am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the mass. Well, what formula does mass that we know of so far? The only formula that does mass that you know of is this one here. 
right? Obviously, we're looking for little m. So maybe it's beneficial for you guys to solve for little m, yes? So it's actually that there, yes? Solving for little m, mass. Well, it looks like to me, if I'm going to use this formula, I need to know n and I need to know big M, yes? I already know big M, actually, I told it to you in this question. I probably won't in most cases, but just to save some time here today. I already know, if I'm looking for the mass, I need to know N, the number of moles, and 18.02 grams per mole is the molar mass of water, yes? And I told you that there in the question. I think you guys have that, don't you? Yeah. Um, so I already told you that there. How am I going to find N? Well, once again, okay, I know that one mole is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. That's a given. All right? I'm looking for moles, right? So let's call it N, for example. Where should I put N, top or bottom, if I'm doing equivalent fractions? Where do I put moles, top or bottom, if I'm keeping the same? Top, okay. What goes on the bottom? Well, look, 6.52 times 10 to the 24 molecules goes on the bottom, okay. I'm trying to keep them the same, right? If you're going to keep the units the same, you've got to keep them the same. One mole, one mole, molecules, molecules. Uh, apples, apples, oranges, oranges, yes. Ferrari, Ferrari, now I got the guy's attention. Porsche, Porsche. Okay. I'm not going to do one for girls because I'm going to get in trouble. So I don't know. Shoes, shoes. Chemistry, chemistry. How's that? Um, we got to keep them the same though, yes? Um, so, solving for n here. Remember, if one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, should I have more moles than one here or less moles? If I have 6.52 times 10 to the 24 molecules, I should have what? More or less? More, right? I should have more moles than um, one, that's for sure. And in fact, you could even do a little bit of mental math right now. Look, this is times 10 to the 24. This is times 10 to the 23. The numbers are almost identical probably should have about 10 more times, yeah? Roughly, give or take a little bit. So we'll see, I guess. Um, cross multiply, if, you're, you know, if you want to set it up like this, that's fine. Cross multiply, that's what I do. So I got 6.02 times 10 to the 23 times n, and 6.52, oh, geez. There. Let me just uh, move this over here. Uh, okay, let's try this again. 6.02 times 10 to the 23 times n, and that has, so that's that, and then now i got to do this, 6.52 times 10 to the 24. How do I solve for n? Well, you divide both sides by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Some of you guys are saying, can't I just do this? Um, do I have to really do all this work? And the answer is no, but I should see somewhere that that's what you're going to divide, yes? At some point in time, hopefully somewhere. Oh, okay. There's two possible answers you can get from this. There is. The only problem is one is right and one's wrong. Okay? So, I want you to do this right now. Do this division for me, please. Get out your calculators and do it. Humor me. It'll be fun. Trust me. Caroline. Just do it. Oh, you got it right. Okay. So. And the two possible answers you'll get are, uh, actually, I forget. Uh, I know the first one. Uh, two possible answers are this. And the other possible answer, okay, is like 1.03 or 4, 
and it's got a bunch of numbers here. E forty seven, something like that. Those are the two possible numbers. Okay, one's right, one's wrong. I already told you if you're paying attention which one's right. Yes. This one is right. The other one's wrong. If you got the bottom one, okay, this is your little notice to you. That's why I get you to do this. Okay, first of all, uh, you need to use brackets. Okay, because if you don't use brackets around this here, you will get that wrong number. Okay, in fact, I'm going to erase this because this one, I don't want that on there. You need to use brackets, because if you don't use brackets, you're not doing the right order of operation. If you don't use brackets, this is what happens. You go this times this, divided by this, and then you're going to take that and multiply it by another times 10 to the 23, okay? Um, which gives you things like e to the 47, e46, e48, okay? I'm telling you right now, listen, listen, if you ever get that long string, E, 47, 46, 48, 49, 50. Those are wrong answers. I'll save you the trouble right now, okay? When you see that, say, hey, I probably didn't use brackets because that's probably what it is, okay? It happens occasionally, but just don't do it ever again, okay? That is not a possible answer ever, 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 okay? Um, you need to make sure, look, this is 24 times 10 to the 23. The difference between these two is about a factor of 10-ish. The difference here is about 1-ish. So 1 times 10 is about 10-ish, okay? Uh, so that's what we should have there, obviously, okay? We're going to keep that number in your calculator. We're going to move it over to here. And okay, we're going to put that in there. Remember, don't get rid of that number, okay? Don't round it. Don't do anything. Uh, just keep it on your calculator, and you're going to use that for the next one. And if you happen to delete it like I did, well, guess what? How do you get it back? Well, I don't know how to get it back, to be honest. I'm not good at calculators. But I just do it again, okay? That times that is 195.166 grams. And then we need to, of course, use significant digits as always. So if you look up here in the question, guys, there's three significant digits there. So I need to have three here. Okay? 195. Final answer. So uh, if you wanted to take the time, if anybody wants to do this, let me know. I'll give you extra credit. You count out 6.52 times 10 to the 24 molecules of water. So I'll give you the water. You count out that many molecules, okay? You'll put them on a scale eventually. So I'll get you those water molecules. We'll get you a beaker, okay? Uh, a, a nice big one. We'll put it on the scale. You count out those molecules for me. You put them on the scale. Put them in the beaker for me. We'll zero out the scale. And the scale will read 195 grams. I'll prove it to you, okay? You can do that for extra credit if you wish. Okay? There you go. Extra credit assignment. Yay. Okay. Uh, this one. Let's go back a page. See, and you guys said, I never give you extra credit stuff. What? There's an offer opportunity right there for you. Seriously. Hey? Eh? I'm, such, I'm such a good guy, aren't I? Okay. Um, if you determine how many molecules you have, you then could figure out how many atoms or ions you have. All right? So we could actually go a little bit further, one step further, and say, geez, I wonder how many actual carbons there would be in this, or how many actual fluorines would actually be in this. So then after the water thing, I'd say, now go back and count up how many hydrogens there were. And, and we could do that. We're going to do that right now, actually, but we're going to do it with aluminum instead. Um, so once you find how many molecules you have, you can then calculate atoms or ions. I'll give you a little chart here. You don't have to copy this down, but it's a, lot, a lot of students find it helpful. If I want to get from mass to moles, we have a formula that does that for me. It's this one here. Yes? 
We did that last day, correct? Mass amount. If I want to get from moles to molecules, well, I don't, I guess you could say I have a formula for that, but I, I, I don't know if you can call it a formula, but it's a, I definitely know that for every one mole, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Okay, those two are equivalent to each other, so I, I could use that in that little section there to get from moles to molecules. And the last part would be, well, if I if I knew how many molecules I had, how would I get to like, for example, how many atoms or ions would be in that molecule? And all I'm going to tell you for right now is that's a times, and if I'm going that way, it's dividing. Okay, and I'll, we'll do this first example, and I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. Okay? Now, I'm not going to give you that chart. These formulas are on there. Uh, this formula is on the back of your periodic table. This is not really a formula. It's just uh, something that's on the back of your periodic table there, Avogadro's number, it says. Okay, so that's there. And then this part here, you're just going to have to kind of memorize or think about kind of thing. The thing is, with this part here, it's different for each molecule, and I'll show you what I mean eventually here. But it's pretty, I think you'll understand once I, I, under, I give you this here. So let's look at this one here. How many aluminum ions are found in 12 and a half grams of aluminum sulfide? Well, first of all, there's aluminum sulfide right there. Okay, I have 12 and a half grams of that. Geez, let's see. I got the mass. I got the molar mass. I could probably find... N, right? Hey, I know N. I could find out how many molecules I have. Look, I'm already over to here already, right? So very quickly, I've made my way from left to right here, and I'm here right now, and I want to get to how many atoms or ions do I have, yes? Okay? So, here we go. 12 and a half grams is what I have of aluminum sulfide. Well, let's see. How many moles is that equivalent to? 12 and a half grams... Aluminum sulfide apparently is 150.17 grams per mole. And that works out to be uh, oops, uh, 0.083. And once again, obviously that number keeps on going for a while. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that for right now because um, I'm not at my final answer. I don't want to round yet. Now, I have 0.083 moles, so I'm here now. How am I going to get to molecules? Well, I'd probably use this ratio here, yes? I know that one mole turns out to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. I have 0.083 moles. I wonder how many molecules that's equivalent to. So cross, multiply, and solve. Some of you guys are saying, well, can't I just take those two and multiply them together? Do I have to give you that? I, yeah, I don't care. Show me some work, though. That's all I care about. Okay? Uh, so 0.083 times 6.02 is 5.01 times 10 to the 22 molecules. So that's exactly what we did on the last question, yes? 5.01 times 10 to 22 molecules. The last part is this now. Okay, let's think about this for a second. Here's aluminum sulfide. That's what one molecule looks like right there. For every one molecule, okay, to make up a molecule of aluminum sulfide, aluminum is a 3 plus, sulfide is a 2 minus, I swap and drop. I need two aluminums to lose three electrons. I need three sulfurs to gain those six electrons technically altogether. Okay? Um, that's the formula that makes up basically one unit or one aluminum sulfide, yes? So let me ask you this question. This is not a trick question. Okay? Follow with me. How many aluminums do I have in this one molecule? Yes, two. So let's say I had um, 100 molecules of aluminum sulfide. How many aluminums would I have? Yeah, 200. If I had a bajillion 
How many aluminums would I have? Two bajillion, yes? Right? So for every one molecule, it tells me that I need two aluminums for that, yes? So for every one of these molecules right here, oops, I need twice that much, right? I need two times the aluminums, right? For every one molecule, if one molecule has two aluminums in it, and I have 5.01 times 10 to the 22, don't I need 5 point, or don't I have, I should say, 5.01 times 10 to the 22 times two aluminums? Yes? So I'm going to simply take this, times it by two, in this particular case, and I get one times 10 to the 23 aluminum, three plus ions, okay? Aluminum three plus ions. Final answer, three significant digits, because that's what's in my question. But I simply multiply it by two figure out the aluminum ion that actually Every aluminum is all fine. If I had a thousand molecules, I'd have two thousand aluminums in there. If I had a bajillion, I'd have two bajillion aluminums. Yes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If I had five point oh one times ten to the twenty-two, I have that times two aluminums. Okay. Some people ask me, what about the sulfurs? Well, the question wasn't about sulfur. It was about aluminum ions. How would you figure out how many sulfurs? Is there still sulfur in there? Sure there is. How many sulfurs is there? What would I do at the end there? Times by three, right? Times by three. Because I need three sulfurs for every one of these molecules. All right. So, yeah, so we need two sulfurs. Uh, if we wanted to, or sulfides, I guess, ions. Uh, but we don't, that's not the question. It says how many aluminum ions. It says right here, how many aluminum ions, right? So I don't care in this particular case about the sulfurs, okay? Well, uh, the best way is to try some of these, obviously, on your, on your own, and then see how we do tomorrow kind of thing when we go over these. But uh, we're going to do, of course, one more example. We did this way. So guess what? We obviously get to do... Reverse, yes. So let's look at that one. That's this one right here, last page. I'm just going to erase some of this stuff here. All right. Tin 4 thiocyanate, okay? contains 2.80 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms. So here's what tin 4 thiocyanate looks like, by the way. And of course, today, you'll have to, when you're doing homework, you'll have to come up with that formula by yourself, right? Which um, you should be able to do. So shouldn't be an issue. I want to find the mass of tin 4 thiocyanate present. So once again, if you wanted to write this down, you can. You don't have to. If I had 2.80 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms, I'd put that over here. Carbon. That's how many carbons I have. Okay. I want to find the mass of N4 thiocyanate. So, once again, if I'm looking for the mass, there's two things I need to know. Um, before I get to that part there, geez, i only talking about carbon atoms right now. I want to find the entire mass of tin 4 thiocyanate present. How am I going to get from carbon atoms back to molecules, right? So in this case, I need to do some dividing, obviously. Okay. But I'm going that way, I'm multiplying. But think about it this way. Let's see. Look at this one molecule here. There's one molecule of tin 4 thiocyanate. How many carbons does it take to make one molecule? 
Steven? Four. Okay, because the four goes to everything inside the brackets, yes? So I need four carbons for every one molecule. Make one molecule, yes? And if you want, you can even do a racial proportion thing. You can even do something complicated like this. Four carbon atoms for every one molecule. If I had 2.80 times 10 to 20, how many molecules? You can do something like that even. I don't care. But you have to basically say, here, if, if I gave you 2.8 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms, I give you, here, let's do it this way, well, I don't know, uh, if I gave you, for example, let's say I give you 12 carbons, so I'm going to give Ryan 12 carbons, and I say, make as many molecules as you can, what's he going to do? Well, he's going to say, oh, I need 4 carbons for every molecule, so if I give him 12, I say, well, let's see, 12, 4 for each one, so 12 divided by 4, I can make 3 whole molecules. I had that many. So, 7 times 10 to the 22 molecules. I can now convert that to, okay, I know that 1 mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. If I had 7 to the 22 molecules, I wonder, 7.00 7 times 10 to the 22. So once again, you're dividing those numbers. Now you don't have to set it up like this, okay? That's the okay. case. But somewhere on your sheet, you at least kind of give me this, okay? Because I'm going to give you part marks for your work, okay? Until test time, because I want to see what you do. What if you can fix it? Well, if you still show me the answer, I honestly don't know where you got the answer from. And I don't know if it was from your calculator, or a friend, or what. So I want to see at least that, okay? It's not going to show me all the steps, but I can see some work. I can see, for example, what's the move of that. I don't know. Okay. Uh, 7 times 22 divided by 6.02 times 10. Once again, obviously do not round that number. Okay. So that's how many And guess what? One six moles. And I already told you the molar mass, but once again, I'd expect to see that somewhere on your page here. And multiplying those two together. Forty point eight grams. Okay. Final answer, three significant digits, because I gave you three significant digits in the question here. Right there. Okay. Any questions on that? Anyone? Did I lose you anywhere? Except for the beginning of today, maybe? Besides that? Yes, no? Well, luckily for you, we have extra help, so. Um.